is an expectation that you're going to see credits contributing to the profitability of, of Tesla in the second quarter. And by the way, it is expected to turn a profit for an eighth straight quarter. I think what people will be focused on will be the automotive gross margins, because that will give a good perspective in terms of especially X credits, how efficient they are in terms of building these vehicles at a higher rate, especially when you look at the Model Y as they ramp up uh, production and deliveries of that vehicle, especially in China. That's where it's really where you're seeing the growth of the Model Y right now. Yeah, Steve, on that note, so talk about the breakdown and their results and what you think is most important to investors and why you think the shares are lagging the market this year. Well, look, first, you've got to be impressed with Texas, uh, Tesla's execution. Look, record sales, 201,000 units on track to do 52 billion in revenues. They're doing awfully darn well. Will they maintain their profitability despite Zev Credit slowly phasing out? The short answer is absolutely. Again, record sales combined with a big cost advantage because they were the first auto company to take battery production in-house. But the third thing that relatively fewer people are talking about is like most of the highest market cap companies in the world, Tesla's really promoting and a leader in promoting software as a service models. So they're charging $10 a month for Sirius uh, XM radio. They're now charging $199 a month for uh, autonomous driving features. These are software as a service offerings. Almost 100% of this drops to the bottom line. That's why Tesla is doing better than the others. Now, can they keep this up? We'll have to see. $634 billion is nosebleed high. And even for a company doing everything right, I don't think one company can own the electric market for long. You know, Steve and or Phil, let me start with you, Steve. Uh, a lot of the, the troubles that have uh, vexed the auto industry this year trace back to shortage of chips, silicon chips. Uh, but I can't imagine, Steve, that there is an automobile on the planet that uses more chips probably than Tesla. How have they been able or have they been able to sidestep it? Well, look, Tesla's being hit by uh, shortages and supply chain issues just like everybody else. But again, you got to give Elon credit. He sees over the horizon a little more quickly than others. They're already developing their own chips. Anytime Elon sees a shortage, as he did with lithium-ion batteries three, four, five, six years ago, mm -hmm. he moves to take it in-house. He wants to have control so he can move faster than anyone else. By and large, he's done that successfully. Chip, uh, excuse me, uh, Chip. Steve, do you, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Phil, do you have a, a viewpoint on the chips? <laughs> No, I agree with Steve. And, and I think also Elon Musk has alluded to the fact that they were impacted to a certain extent by the chip crisis. Now, will yep. we get greater clarity during the conference call when analysts are asking them if this question comes up? How much of an impact did you see from the chip crisis? What do you expect in the third and the fourth quarter? I think that's more what people want. They want that granularity, and I'm not sure they're going to get it. You know, the conference calls have shifted a bit. It used to be much more open in terms of analysts being able to ask questions. Now, in the past couple of quarters, they've done a thing where they will pick uh, investor questions, and then they will have some analyst questions. Not as free form as it used mm -hmm. to be. So I, I will be interested to see if that question does come up, though. Thanks, Chip. Uh, let's move on to the, <laughs> to the big competition, Steve, that's coming here. I assume in the passenger car market, it's, it's Tesla versus everybody, including everybody versus China, but maybe especially Volkswagen, as Phil has educated me, not Chip. Well, look, there's three things going on. And, and the headline here is there's a tidal wave of competition coming at Tesla. It's hard to hold the electric market forever. The three things that are going to be fun to watch are, look, for the last 40 years, the number one selling vehicle in the United States, year in, year out, has not been a car. It's been the Ford 150. Great vehicle. The challenge is even Ford realizes the entire market's going all electric. So they're coming out with their new E Ford 150 Lightning. And the question is, will that vehicle do as well as the traditional Ford? Now, Tesla's come out with this crazy-looking Cybertruck, which took me by surprise, but they've already taken 800,000 orders. And Rivian, combined with Amazon, the second-largest market cap company in the world, going right at that space. And if each of these two entrants, again, the largest market cap companies in the top 10 in the world, each takes 10 or 15% of market share away from Ford, that spells problems for Ford. The other big smackdown that everybody should be looking at is there just haven't been that many great 
competitive EVs. And I think the firm that may have the best is Volkswagen's ID3 and ID4. Plus, they have also taken battery production in-house. I think Herbert Dees of VW is probably one of the most visionary auto execs in the country. Deep pockets and a global uh, sales network. So Volkswagen is really going to give Tesla a run for the money. And then the third, and maybe most important part, is China. Right. Okay. Here we before, have to... Chinese haven't been big players, but they're coming on strong. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.